Okay, so quick video here to explain the password file, which is under etc, right? Uh, it's the main file that contains the user data. Now you would think, oh, the password file, that contains the password. It does not. That's in another file called the shadow file, which we're going to take a look at. Now, historically, back in ye olden days, password did contain the user's password in plain text. Um, and then they started encrypting it and keeping it in that file. But there were, there were issues because everything needs to be able to access the password file. Uh, but you don't want everything to be able to access the user passwords. You want to keep that kind of locked down. So they moved the passwords into another file called shadow. Uh, if we wanted to look at the password file, we would type cat slash etc slash pass wd. Not password the whole word, but just pass wd. And uh, this is a colon separated database that each, each field is separated by a colon. So let's take a look at the bottom line there. The, the first field is the username, student. That's the username you use when you log in. And then would be the password. Now, there is no password, so it just says X, which just means go refer back to that shadow file, which we'll take a look at in another video. Then you have the, the user number, and then you have their primary group number. Now, users can belong to multiple groups, but your primary group is the one when you create new files um, that's the that's the group in the, the permissions that they belong to, right? Um, so if I was to do touch dummy, and then I do ls-l, you'll see that dummy belongs to the group student, right? With read permissions. The reason that that uh, the reason that um, I have both a user and a group called student is by default in modern Linux systems. When I create a new user, it creates a new group of just that one user. So I'm not accidentally sharing permissions with other people. Back when you used to join like the accountants uh, group, every file you created, anybody in accountants could read and there were security issues with that. Uh, the next field after group ID number is user description. And this is comma separated, and this is going to be a little bit different on each system, but pretty much always the first field is the, um, is the username, the second field is the phone number, the third field is the email, and then other stuff, right? Often it's an office address, but you can have different things here, and it, it, this is going to vary depending upon your system, but user description information always goes there. Uh, and this is used by finger. So if I do uh, finger student, no jokes. Oh, well, finger's not installed, so I can't do it. But if I did, it would uh, bring up that information from there. Um, after, th after the user description information is the uh, user home directory, right? So home student is my home directory. After that is the default shell. So notice two things. One, the student default shell is slash bin slash bash which is what we'd expect when we log in, that's what we get. But notice right above it, GDM, the default shell is false, right? And actually a lot of these are false. Or notice GeoClue, it is no logon. There are a lot of these accounts in your system which are system accounts. They're for programs that are running, but nobody should ever be logging in on those. This is one of the things uh, that makes old Linux systems vulnerable is I might be able to log in as GDM. Uh, if I'm a bad guy, and then do things that I shouldn't be able to do. Um, that's the gist of the uh, of the password file. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You don't actually edit it directly, right? Um, you will always use user add or user del or user mod to change this file. And we'll get into those commands in class this week.